Hey everyone, welcome to episode 1 of the Starscape Reborn series. Now, I have taken the liberty of completing the early game tutorial missions, as you can see from our economic activity here. We also have basically nothing as far as stats goes. We have a little reputation from Corsac from the tutorial missions. We have absolutely nothing on this account right now. So, my plans are to try to end this episode with a decent mining ship and a decent fighter. Basically still starter ships, but something that we can use to get to the next level of ships a lot quicker. So I have a couple ideas as to how we can do that. And the first idea is looking at the marketplace. So looking at the marketplace, you can see that we can already afford some of the early starting fighters as well as a Marlin. Now this may not always be the case because the market prices are going to change. A little earlier there were honey badgers on here and now there aren't any. So, the market conditions can change, but it's not too hard for a new player starting off to earn a couple quick credits with some drones and get to the marketplace and try to buy an early mining ship. So, what we're actually going to do is we're probably going to buy the Marlin, I think. We have the credits from the starting mission, and I think it's going to help kick off the start of this a lot better than we could otherwise. We could also go for a Falcon, at which point we could probably hunt some drone fleas. I think for the starting game that the Marlin is probably our best bet to go. Normally I'd go for a Badger, but I'm not seeing any on the market right now. So you really have to kind of adapt what you're doing to the conditions of the marketplace. Here we are looking at the Marlin. We'll get it spawned and we'll take a look at the upgrades that we have. We're going to want to switch this over to a tractor pretty much right away and with the remaining credits we have i don't think we can afford too many upgrades on this so we're probably going to fly it as it is right now but we need to decide what our next goal is we need to figure out what we want to go mine so we can go work towards that so i'm going to head to the manufacturing bay and see how much it takes to craft a falcon so as far as the early game goes we do have a couple interceptor options we have the paragon zenith kind of interceptor route uh, Falcon Zenith. And as for the fighters, we have the Saber and I think the Aurora. So the Saber, I'm not going to go for. And I don't know too much about the Aurora, so I'm probably going to skip that as well. I think what we want to go for is probably the Falcon. Now, it's a pretty fragile little ship, but the Paragon is one of the better fighters in the game, one of the better interceptors and definitely one of the fastest, and I think we can make it work for some PvE. Our goal here is 300 Coralite, 120 Reconite, and 30 Gellium. I still want to take the ship out of secure space. Uh, Beta Quasad is not a terrible place to go, but I don't want to be mining inside of any of these inner core systems. Alright, after concluding our first mining mission, we don't have the worst stockpile of resources. I have decided on a different ship to build to begin with, I think. 
Um, I think we can afford one ship right now, and I need some more Coralite, and then we can afford another. So we could afford a Badger here, which is actually something I'm going to go for soon. Um, the Marlin's okay, but we really want to get a Honey Badger pretty quickly. The Honey Badger is a very, very strong mining ship for what it costs. So I think we're going to actually go with the Aurora here. And the reason for that is it's kind of a middle ground. The Falcon is pretty good, but it is kind of a paper tiger. It's not very strong. Hole wise doesn't do a ton of damage. Uh, whereas the Sabre is kind of a flying brick, does more damage, but again, it's going to take a lot more damage. Um, I think the Aurora is a really good like middle ground. And then we can move on to a Luminar a little later on. So we'll get that started and then we can do some of the early game drone hunting and early game PvE. Our Aurora just completed. I'm going to take it down to the docking bay. We'll spawn it and I'll see what upgrades we can try to add to the ship and get it flight worthy. Alright, we have our Aurora set up and ready to go. I did throw a shield amplifier on here. So we'll give her a spin and see if we can't go find some drones. It was at this point when I ran into an unfinished drone fleet and decided to take advantage of the situation and get a free drone commander kill. And of course, one fleet simply won't do. How about we do three fleets instead? These smaller fleets, while not containing the same loot that larger fleets do, still offer easy access to drone command cores and small amounts of late game resources like Narcor and even Recor. As you guys will see later in the video, that is what allows us to get the Honey Badger very early on in the series. No one can argue that Starscape isn't a beautiful game, and while it is not always practical, combat without the game's UI can be a pretty awesome experience. I also ran into my first pirate den and made quick work of that. For newer players just starting the game, these resources and credit rewards can be an easy early game boost. I also like that this allows some early game players to start off with a little more combat. I would love to see this style catered to more in the game's future. The idea that the player would load into the game for the first time, choose an NPC faction to join right away, and then choose from one of four starter ships, deciding whether they want to go combat with a light fighter or interceptor or perhaps a light or industrial starter mining vessel. One day, perhaps. While I was exploring around secure space, I found a badger for sale at one of the NPC markets. To finance this purchase, I sold several of our drone cores, a decision that was not particularly significant given their abundance. Combining the badger we purchased and the narcor we got from fighting drone fleets, I was able to craft the honey badger, which is one of my main objectives for this episode. While the Honey Badger was being built, a drone fleet spawned near the station I was waiting at, so naturally, I had to give them a hand. 
purely out of generosity, of course. Nothing to do with free loot. With the honey badger now finished, all we need now are the resources to craft a luminar and upgrades for both ships. One of the more remarkable features of the honey badger is the dual weapon upgrade slots. Combining that with two rapid bolt upgrades dramatically increases the mining rate of this already effective ship. Wait, wait, hold on. 5.2 5.2 Wait, so it does not increase mining speed. Hold on, I need to double check this. So it does affect mining speed, but it doesn't say that it affects mining speed. This is a serious Kath moment. At this point, I was just 15 blue Narcor from being able to craft our Luminar, and I decided to take on a drone factory in an attempt to gain the missing resources we needed. So, we could address this. We could address why I have three visited systems in the middle of wild space. But we're not going to. Because it was a bad idea. I had a moment of weakness. And I was reminded why that is a bad idea. So we're just gonna, we're just gonna move on from that actually. I did take our new honey badger out and get some mining done. So our current situation is actually not too bad. We have some command cores and some other drone cores that we can either sell for money or use for reputation. Um, the drone fleets gave us some resources here that we can't get otherwise, and that is quite nice. And our baseline resources aren't doing too bad either. So we're gonna craft some modules here to get our Luminar and our Honey Badger up to spec so that they're ready to use for the next episode. So I think for the Luminar, I want to get energy regen. At the moment, I don't think that the battery is very balanced, if I recall correctly, with discussions among the community. So we're going to get ourselves a parallel circuits. Uh, 
I also want to get two rapid bolts for our honey badger. That is one of the more important things we're doing right now. For our luminar, I can't quite decide whether we want swift bolt, heavy bolt, or rapid. We have heat generation and ammo. It doesn't seem like the luminar has very good heat management to begin with. Uh, projectile speed isn't too bad. The rate of fire on the luminar isn't terrible. Um, I think we might actually go with heavy bolt. Doesn't slow down our bolts at all, but it does give us a decent amount of damage and the luminar already hits fairly hard. So we'll start with a heavy bolt. For our second defensive module, we currently have uh, we currently have shield regen and I kind of want to double down on that for now. We will change it later. I'd love to see if you guys have uh, suggestions for loadouts because again, I am used to warships for the most part. So my knowledge on builds for these smaller fighters is somewhat limited. So we're just gonna go with the shield amplifier for now. So we have our reactor. We have our second defensive module. We have a weapon that'll max out our upgrade slots on the left. We do still have one slot open for an ability. And I don't think we're gonna go for disruptor. This is not intended to be a PVP ship. Um, I think we might get an afterburner, which will allow us to kind of escape some, some more awkward situations. So I think we'll go for an afterburner this time. And I did not have the resources to make our the most important module, which is our light hull repair module. But we will get that done soon enough. I've decided to take our new Luminar out for a spin and see what she can do. Got a pretty easy drone fleet here, in all honesty, but we will still make short work of it. Yeah, the Luminar definitely packs a bigger punch than the Aurora by a pretty healthy amount. Feels good. I doubt T3 fleets are going to be much of a threat to us anymore. Here they come. Not too worried about our hole. We've got a hole repair, and that does a pretty good job with these low-level fleets. I think we're actually gonna have some fun with these drones and lead them on a little bit of a merry chase. Yeah, that's what I'm talking about. <laughs> they lit up the whole field basically. actually pretty interesting here because the fighter escort basically followed us out while the larger ships are most of the larger ships are still in the back pretty undefended overall now we are running a little low on energy but i reckon that we'll be all right just have to watch our health pretty closely
Ah, that's our drone commander. Very nice. We have to be really careful here. See, now that's, that's an easy mistake to make. I was not looking at my health. And I did not realize how powerful that commander was. So we are going to have to be... Very, very lucky here. This is a pretty rookie mistake, all in all. So we should have died there, all things considered. I definitely underestimated the drone lieutenant. I didn't notice we had a lieutenant instead of just a fighter. But uh, that was probably a little closer than it needed to be. Um, goes to show you that you can be pretty confident out the door and it's not going to do you much good when you run into something that's bigger than you can handle. So I will see you guys in a little bit when we're ready to engage this fleet again. All right, how about we give that how about we give that a second go? So the drone lieutenant is definitely definitely our biggest problem here. So I'm going to see if we can single him out. Ah, there he is. We're gonna try to single him out and see if we can't take care of him before he becomes a critical issue. Oh, he is going to fly right into those mines. We have an advanced drone destroyer as well. This is pretty crazy for a tier 3 fleet, if I'm honest. I like it. As I'm about to die again. You know... I think I learned my lesson here. Apparently not. But we will be victorious. Eventually. Alright, let's go for round three. <laughs> and actually get it finished this time. Two drone frigates, one of them being advanced, definitely makes this more challenging. But with the advanced one gone, this will be no problem. Nice. All right. Well, that is the drone fleet down. Hopefully some of these wrecks are still spawned around here. <laughs> Admittedly, that was definitely, definitely rough around the edges, but we came out in the end. just entered this system and while I was sitting here I noticed that we have we have an aberration that is not connected to a ring and this guarantees that it's an X structure so that's worth noting you know obviously we don't know whether this one is an X structure and these two here we don't know either but if you ever find one there's actually one around planet one as well one around planet one Let's see if we get any luckier here uh, it looks like just these two. But if they are not spawned in a ring, 
then you know for a fact that that is an X structure. And that can make scanning down the more important structures quicker and prioritizing where you know you need to go. We'll see what we get from here. Um, this is actually the first real X structure that we've found for the series. I admittedly did not expect to find them so quickly in unsecure space. I was going to expect us to find these later on when we explored wild, but I will take what I can get. Basically everything we get this early on is going to be tremendously helpful. Got our quick mini game here. This is this is uh this isn't a hard one. Though occasionally I still goof it. Just try to move in one direction as far as you can and then go the other direction as far as you can. That is very nice right there. That is significant. Now that's not a large amount of resources to someone who's been playing the game for a while, but on our new account, that is going to be very helpful. Our second security bypass minigame. It would be too easy for this one to just be this direction, huh? Oh, no, it was. Another very nice group of resources there. I am going to head to planet one, I think, and then we'll look to see if we have any stations in this system because I want to drop these resources off. Ah, planet four. Yeah, I want to drop these resources off as quickly as possible. Uh, are we close to the orbit of planet six? No. Uh, planet six is slightly closer. Ah, we'll do planet one first. get that one out of the way and then we will go to planet more drop all our resources in save storage again we are in pvp space right now so we can definitely get jumped by other players although there are plenty of measures you can take to keep yourself from getting ambushed so i think we'll be all right now we don't want to we don't want to mess with that right now we're gonna let them have their fun That is a cool view in the distance there. Now keep in mind, this system is only a few jumps out from Citadel. I'm quite surprised, given the fact that there are quite a few people on right now, that we have this many X structures in a system so close to the capital of the galaxy. All right, we're gonna head off to Planet Four really quick. We gotta get these resources in some storage. That is not at all insignificant. I think this is more than we've mined in total combined, just within this one star system. Ah, well, that is certainly a welcome surprise, but not really. We need to get inside the station pretty quickly. That is a lot of pirate ships. Drop some of these resources off in the refinery terminal while we explore. Might as well have them going. So, before I leave you guys, I want to remind everyone that I would love to hear your suggestions, if you have any questions about the series, if you have any bonus challenges we might add on before we finish the series. Um, I'd love to hear feedback about the episode, about the editing style. This is 
as much an experiment for me as anything else. I've never done a series on this channel that as long form before, and I'm learning as we go. I hope you guys have enjoyed this episode, and I will see you next time.